uh, a little town. We have a local sheriff office. And uh, just uh, two months uh, ag ago, uh, our local sheriff was fired for, s for speeding. So we had no sheriff. <laughs> and the deputy was uh, on sick leave. Well, they started uh, questioning me too. I was I had a very bad uh, flu, so I was very sick. But they started questioning me too, and they questioned me also until two in the night. The officer who questioned me had uh, brought his notebook with him and uh, word a word, writing the interrogation with word. But I had to help him write it. We couldn't use word. And uh, later on, when uh, he, uh, I had to sign the interrogation document, he had to use my printer to uh, get it printed out. So I made a copy of the document. I wasn't supposed to have the document, so I made a copy and emailed it to my lawyer. And during the interrogation, I went to the bathroom and uh, take a phone call to the biggest Norwegian newspaper. I tipped tip them off. <laughs> And uh, half an hour later, there was a photographer outside our windows. And the officer said, shit, they're like already here. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't like, uh, didn't like the press because uh, uh, this uh, economic and uh, computer crime unit uh, has been attacked all the time from the Norwegian press because all their work really stinks. Okay. A couple of days later, uh, when uh, all you guys uh, heard of the story, I think some of you started uh, bombarding MPA's lower in Norway with emails because their server crashed. <laughs> and uh, uh, opposite uh, to the case here in the United States, we have almost 100% support of the the whole Norwegian press and uh, a lot of television stations have been supported us uh, and uh, said the whole case is bullshit. Uh, and most people in Norway also uh, support John. For example, uh, uh, in the beginning of January, uh, we got a message that um, John was awarded a National uh, College Student Prize for his writing of this SS. <laughs> and he got uh, <laughs> and uh, he got about uh, two thousand uh, dollars uh, award, and uh, it was a grand banquet in uh, Oslo, and uh, the award with all the television celebrities. Oh, it's great. Okay. Uh, have, in Norway, there has been a lot of, um, of press attention. The day after the 26th, January 26th, all the main Norwegian uh, newspapers had the story on their front page, the whole front page. And they all supported John. Uh, there was also an incident when the Norwegian Minister of Justice, or perhaps you call it Secretary of Justice here, had mentioned the case in a meeting with the police. And she had mentioned the case as a crime while it was pending. It was under an investigation. So two weeks ago, we got a letter of excuse for, uh, from the Norwegian Minister of Justice. Uh, the case also had uh, a great uh, TV um, coverage. All the main Norwegian uh, uh, TV station had, has been over at our home. Swedish television and French television, and uh, also ABC News. 
but I didn't, I didn't. I don't know if they were allowed to send anything because, as I know, they are owned by Disney. Uh, the whole uh, uh, computer intelligentsia in Norway also uh, support us 100%. I can give an, an example. We use an uh, ISP, a uh, web hotel provider, where we posted uh, links for our code. And uh, one day, uh, the manager in Norway, this is a uh, United States, an American company, with an affi affi affiliate in Denmark, where the servers are, and they have an agent in Norway. We got a telephone from the manager, and he told me he had, uh, he had uh, got a telephone from this criminal unit in Norway, and they asked him to send them um, copies of our web server. And then he told them, the web server in, in Denmark is in Denmark. If you get a court order from Denmark, I'll give you what you want. And then he refused to give anything before they had a court order. And uh, then he said to me, I have made the copies if, if, in case if they uh, get a court order. But if, is there anything you want me to delete? The case in Norway is uh, pending, and uh, they were uh, supposed to reach a decision in end of May, but nothing has happened. They have put a, a lid on the case. Uh, we have heard that they have sent the case to some law professors to get uh, to see what they m make of the case, but uh, from some folks have told us they, they, they can't do anything. So they will, I think they will close the case without doing anything. Uh, hmm. uh, I have to tell you that our case is not that important, but the whole case of free speech and uh, uh, free programs is very important, uh, uh, but uh, because this could lead us to uh, the, uh, a complete control from these uh, major companies. Uh, I could give you an example. Uh, I already heard that they are planning to make DVDs which will self-destruct after you play them ten times. And per perhaps uh, the, the next step will be like in Men in Black. You buy a film, look at it, at the end they erase your memory, <laughs> so you can buy it once again. <laughs> okay, that was all. Thank you. Any questions? Questions. Yes? Um, so what kind of support have you gotten? You say you've gotten many emails, but besides that, how have people been supporting you? Well, there was uh, a Norwegian uh, uh, Linux magazine. They started a petition uh, after receiving uh, about 10,000 signatures. They ended it. And there's also been, uh, there was a discussion on TV with, um, uh, what's his name? Gisle Hannemir. Yes, Gisle Hannemir. He's, uh, he started the first ISP in Norway. He's one of the real internet gurus in Norway. And he basically called the, the, um, the economical crime unit, he called him Gestapo. <laughs> so we received a lot of support. Any other questions? Yes? How long did it take you to write UCSS? Well, the most, most important part was done by our German member. He, ba he used about uh, four or five, six hours to reverse engineer the Xing DVD player. My part took about three, four hours to write utility and tweak it and fix the bugs.
Yes? What happened to the other members? I mean, you mentioned the German one. Or were, were there any others? I mean, who was everybody involved in creation of DECSS? It's just us three. Me, the German member, and the Dutch member. And they're both their identities are unknown also to me. Yes? Well, it was all, all sorts of questions, like um, when did you meet the other members of Moore? Where did you meet them? And uh, who did what? And uh, did I have a link on my web page? Did I host it on my web page? And uh, when did I put up a link? And all sorts, those kinds of questions. And they were they were polite. They weren't really, wasn't really that. Um, Hard. Yes? Uh, one of the things I admire is, uh, about uh, the situation is how a, uh, Mr. Johansson, I mean the father, as a, you know, is a supportive of the, was, uh, John, was your father involved in the, your computing programming uh, earlier before this, or was this the, uh, you know, did he come on supporting you after the problems started happening? Uh, was he involved in the computing, uh, computer work you were doing before all the uh, situations of the police, the economic uh, uh, units and all that? Yes, my, it's my father who got me started when I was about six years old. <laughs> <laughs> I started using his computer and when I was seven he had to get me my own computer, so he could use his own. <laughs> so he's the one who got me started. Yes? Uh, uh, what does Mr. Johnson do for me? Are you, are you in the computer field? Yes and no. Actually, I work with uh, Norwegian Postal Services, but I also have a part-time company in selling computers. Yes? Yeah, mostly IRC and email. Yes? Was the media a lot different over there than it is here? I mean, have you noticed that since you've been here? I mean, not really. There was a lot of propaganda in the beginning, Norway as well. Uh, most, of the, most of the big newspapers wrote uh, articles which referred to these as coping utilities. And then the smaller news uh, magazines, they just basically rewrote the articles, so they had much the same content. But uh, recently they started referring to us as a, as a playback uh, device. That's a bit wrong as well, but better. <laughs> yes? Oh, nobody. <laughs> Yes? How is it that you tried in an American court? Did you get extradited? Did you have to come to America to get tried? Well, well I'm in the trial on Monday. I'm not involved in the 2600 trial. I've been added as a named defendant to the California trade secret trial, like lawsuit. But um, unless I go to California, they can't really do me anything. They can't. They can't. <laughs> They can't convict me, but uh, they won't get me ex extradited. Yeah. Yes? Who is Derek Farkas, and why is his name all over the source code? Derek Farkas is a British programmer who worked, uh, he did the, f the first, uh, CSS is actually divided into two parts. You've got the authorization and the decryption. The authorization code was posted in assembly anonymous, anonymously on the internet. Uh, Derek Focus is the person who rewrote it in C. Uh, our German member took his uh, authorization code, the C code, and uh, actually did rip off the GPL header. But uh, we later sorted that out with Derek Focus. But uh, Derek Focus got in legal trouble in Britain, so we had to give away all his rights to the code on the delivered mailing list. Yes? Uh, have you talked to the other two members recently? 
Yeah, I, I talked to the German member about three, four days before I left to the uh, for the U.S. Uh, I haven't talked to the Dutch member in about a month. Yes. I've been charged with what, I, what the lawyers like to refer to as the hacker paragraph. <laughs> it it's, uh, basically says when you break into a computer system. And the second part of the charge is copyright infringement or contribution to copyright infringement. Excuse me? How old are I am? Yeah. Or all three of How old I were at the time? Three of How old Oh, how old we are. I will be 17 this November. Uh, the Dutch member, I don't know his age, I guess he's somewhere in the 20s. Uh, the, the German member is about 26, I think. Yes? Uh, in an earlier uh, discussion here, there was only I think, one person who claimed to have gotten UCSS to work. Yeah. On that? I mean, have you used it? Yeah, yeah, I've used it. I, I don't recall that comment was on the source code, wasn't it? Yeah. But the source code, uh, one of the source codes that was uh, released on the internet, it was, um, but it wasn't the same as the binary version. It was one of the, one of the early versions. So it, uh, it should have worked, but uh, if it didn't, I'm not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> but the binary version should work fine. Yes? So you said the only, you don't expect to have any difficulties because only California um, has jurisdiction in this case? Yeah. Okay. So there's no potential negative outcome for yourself? Well, I could get convicted. But it won't really matter unless I go to California. <laughs> so I guess I have to just stay away from there. Is there a reason why you came forward with your real name and the other two members stayed anonymous? Well, actually, I didn't really come forward. It was Wired who published my name. They saw me on the livid mailing list. Yes? It was, it was a German member. He reverse engineered the XMDD player. He sent his uh, results to me, and I created the actual DCSS application. So he did the reverse engineering of the algorithm. Yes? What do you think uh, the MPAA and those type of people should be doing to try to keep people from pirating their stuff? Or is it a Well, you can't really stop piracy. There is no such thing as copy protection. So there's no way to stop it. You have to just make people buy legal copies by maintaining reasonable prices and good products. Yes, that's all. Anyone has any more questions? Question. Could you uh, tell us the maximum penalties you have been liable for? In, in Norway? Uh, in Norway, California, or anywhere else? In Norway, the maximum penalty is two years for the hacker paragraph and uh, three years for uh, copyright infringe infringement. In California, I'm not really sure. Civil penalties? I'm not facing civil penalties in Norway. It's, cri it's a criminal charge. Yes? Uh, what about region coding? I've been talking about, like, technically, well, how is that? Well, the region coding is actually a separate issue. Uh, the region code is stored in uh, a file called video 
underscore ts dot ifo on the DVD disc stored at hex offset 23 and uh, if you buy a region 2 DVD in Europe and you want to play it here in the US you'll have to decrypt the DVD then edit the video TS IFO file and then you can play it unless you already have a region hack for your player yes Yes, absolutely. That was, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to redefine piracy and take away our fair, fair use rights. Do you find in Norway that people are, are understanding the issue of the, what the real issues are? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. Yes? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's actually... An, yeah, it's actually an old law, so they don't really have a law that they can get me, get me on. So they're trying to apply that old law to this case, which probably won't work. Yeah, they're treating a DVD disc as a computer system, so I've broken into my own DVD. <laughs> yes? Yeah, if Emmanuel's lawyers wants me to go on as a witness, I will. Yes? Divex? Are we talking Divex as an MPEG-4 or the sucky Circuit City shit? <laughs> You, please ref are you talking about quality or the piracy issue or in regards to DCSS? The whole industry? It might end up like MP3, but I don't really find the quality that good. Yes? But actually, I actually sold out. I got a job now, <laughs> so I'll be. I'll, I'm going to take the rest of high school as what you call in Norway a privatist. You study, you study on your own and take exams. And so, in a couple of years, I'll probably be studying in France. Are you coding? Yeah, I'm, yeah, I work as a developer. Yes. Can you please repeat the resolution you mentioned? No, the resolution of a DVD depends on whether it's PAL or NTC. Well, the PAL, PAL resolution is, is well, NTC is 720 times 480. I can't hear you. Could you please step up to the microphone? Thanks. Okay. Uh, can people hear me now? Yes. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, uh, the the resolution uh, of the of the MPEG-2 uh, video is uh, 1024 by 768 uh, standard. That's how all the Hollywood movies are released, and the player converts it to. Uh, to uh, the local TV standard. However, if you uh, hack into the player and hook up a monitor with a proper uh, DAC video card, you can have a, a full uh, a resolution. No, you can't. A DVD on a DVD disc is stored in either 
Paller NTC, which is NTC is 720 times 480. NTSC is, uh, yeah, it's about like that, yeah. Yeah. At, at best, but I, my understanding is that, uh, that uh, that's not true. That's what, they, that's what they want you to believe, but what's really on that DVD is a, is a full quality picture. You can actually buy some hacked DVD players, which you can connect to a HD TV, TV set. Yes, they, yes. They will give you the full resolution. It doesn't really have to be an HD TV set, but I, uh, no, I wasn't one, aware of that. 17 inch monitor, you'll get the full resolution. That is, if you take it right off the uh, digital uh, path. So, uh, yeah. They're quite expensive, though. Uh, actually, uh, actually, not. So, players <laughs> I mean, if, if you, buy, you have to pay a hacker for it, yes, but if you can do it yourself and get a soldering iron out, it's no yourself, problem. It's yeah. And another thing I want to comment on is that uh, in Australia, it, it's illegal to sell a DVD uh, machine that has not been hacked. But actually, Open DVD always says that, but perhaps that's It's illegal to, to sell a uh, DVD player that has zone codes. They, um, after he got in trouble, uh, they put uh, on public TV how the, um, the Australian DVD players were hacked. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And it's also very likely the whole uh, European community is going to, uh, is going to uh, say to hell with the zone codes, too. But that, yeah, that's probably inside information. Soon. You know about it. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay. Probably will say. So uh, I think only America is going to be uh, stuck with it. So, <laughs> I live in Europe. Yeah, but you have the you have all the good DVDs already. Region what? one. <laughs> yes, but on uh, never twice the same color. It'd be nice to uh, get those uh, uh, DVDs on a more decent presentation, such as a monitor or uh, or even Powell, which is well not not the greatest. But I would like to see uh, sharp, clear movies on my monitor because then I can actually read the little details and the credits and other things that you can never see on a never twice the same color. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> Any more questions? Um, Could you please repeat the question I didn't hear? I'm, I'm not pending trial. In Norway, they have decided whether to take it to court or not. Here in the U.S., I only face charges in California, so it's safe for me to be here in New York. Yes? It was to bring the technology to all platforms. Dot org? If our code is still on Open DVD org? Uh, it was under about a month ago. I don't know if they've changed it. It should be there. Unless, if it isn't there, I'll talk to them and get them to put it up. Yes? Uh, what do you think about what's going on in America right now? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> well, it, Yeah, it's it's a pretty serious situation. If you actually read the DMs, yeah, it's actually quite evil. <laughs> it's a really a bad law, and hopefully it will be made unconstitutional. Excuse me. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> Any more questions? <laughs> Following up that previous question, there's been a lot of new legislation here in the United States in uh, about the last 10 years. Uh, some of it is from a very bad business setting. Uh, has there been a lot of new legislation in Norway? Well, not in Norway, but uh, the Euro European Union passing forward a lot of new legislations, and some of them may have impact on Norway. But uh, nothing that bad as the DMCA yet. So is Europe laughing at us right now? <laughs> <laughs>
Well, not really, because someday we might find out that we Europeans are in the same position. Yes? 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 Is that true? Yes, that's correct. This is, I don't know, this is supposed to be a very secure system. <laughs> <laughs> well, anything software based is not secure. I, ca I can mention that this Norwegian uh, internet guru, he called this encryption. Uh, okay, what's this? Uh, Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse encryption. <laughs> Well, the, the, how good encryption is doesn't really matter because it's, it's implemented in the DVD player. So you, so you just have to reverse engineer it and dump the actual decryption code and the keys. And there you have it. Yeah, it's C. Yes? Is it disassembler? Yeah, disassembler. Uh, well, I don't really know which one he used, but uh, I guess he used uh, IDA or v W32. This has. Yeah. Well, I guess that's it. Yes, yes. <laughs> Excuse me? Good job. Thanks. <laughs> Already here. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't like uh, didn't li like the press because uh, uh, this uh, economic and uh, computer crime unit uh, has been attacked all the time from the Norwegian press because all their work really stinks. Uh, okay. A couple of days later, uh, when uh, all you guys uh, heard of the story, I think some of you started bombarding MPA's lower in Norway with emails because their server crashed. <laughs> and uh, uh, opposite uh, to the case here in the United States, we have almost 100% support of the whole Norwegian press. And uh, a lot of television stations have been supported us. Uh, uh, a little town. Uh, we have a local sheriff office, and uh, just uh, two months uh, ag ago, uh, our local sheriff was fired for s f speeding. So we had no sheriff, <laughs> <laughs> and the deputy was uh, on sick leave. Well, they started uh, questioning me too. I was I had a, uh, in Norway. There had been a lot of, um, of press attention. Uh, the day of the 26th, January 26th, all the main Norwegian uh, newspapers had the story on their front page, the whole front page, and they all supported John. Uh, there was also an incident when the Norwegian Minister of Justice, or perhaps you call it Secretary of Justice here, had mentioned the case in a meeting with the police. And she had mentioned the case as a crime while it was pending. 
uh, uh, it was under, under an investigation. So uh, two weeks ago, we got a letter of excuse for, um, from the Norwegian Minister of Justice. Uh, the case also had uh, uh, and uh, said uh, the whole case is bullshit. Uh, and most people in Norway also uh, support John. For example, uh, uh, in the beginning of January, uh, we got a message that uh, John was awarded a National uh, College Student Prize for his writing of this SS. <laughs> and he got uh, <laughs> and uh, he got about uh, two thousand uh, dollars uh, award. And it was a grand banquet in uh, Oslo, and uh, the award with all the television celebrities. So it's great. <laughs> so. Okay. Uh, I have a very bad uh, flu, so I was very sick, but they started questioning me too, and they questioned me also until two in the night. The officer who questioned me had uh, brought his notebook with him and uh, word, a word, writing the interrogation with word. But I had to help him write it. We couldn't use word. And uh, later on, when uh, he, uh, I had to sign the interrogation document, he had to use my printer to uh, get it printed out. So I made a copy of the document. I wasn't supposed to have the document, so I made a copy and emailed it to my lawyer. And during the interrogation, I went to the bathroom and uh, take a phone call to the biggest Norwegian newspaper. I tipped tip them off. <laughs> and uh, half an hour later, there was a photographer outside our windows. And the officer said, shit, they like...